Hello everyone, welcome to another video. My name is Philip. I'm also known as PS or PS Enough. So uh, a couple days ago I was watching random stuff on YouTube and I found this video by Movies with Mikey, which is a YouTube channel about movies. Um, it's apparently by one of the creators of Borderlands uh, or the story writer for Borderlands and he talks about uh, movies and what he thinks about the movies and trying to deconstruct them a little bit and he did this uh, particular uh, video called Lessons Animation Taught Us and uh, the idea is to uh, go through uh, animation movies and try to summarize what lessons you learned from them uh, as you were watching them when you were younger or older or whenever. And in the end of that video, he made a call to action for other YouTubers to also uh, try to do something similar, you know, talk about what animation movies uh, you watched and, uh, or not just movies, can be just series, uh, anything about animation and what it taught you. So I thought, yeah, that's a cool idea. I, I should do that for my channel because, you know, I can. So this video is about that. So what animations uh, have I seen before? Um, I've seen a lot of animation stuff. The earliest things that I can remember are some uh, Saturday night or Saturday morning cartoons. Uh, stuff like He-Man, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Captain Planet, uh, Doctanian and the Three Mosque Hounds, which in Portuguese is D'Artacão. Um, so all of these series that, that I saw early on when I was very young, uh, they all shared a little of a, of a similar trait. All of them uh, felt like they were... Well, first of all, they were meant to entertain. So they, they had a little action, a little back and forth. Usually it's a plot where there is this evil part and there is this good part. And the good part needs to fight the evil part. And every episode there's like a clash between both of them. Evil one kind of destroys the evil one, uh, or the good one kind of destroys the evil one, but it always gets away to fight another day. And that, that, this is a recurring theme that happens on series. I remember Dr. Gadget had that as well. And uh, But what lessons did we learn from, from watching those? Well, uh, first, that uh, well, you can overcome things if you really work hard at it. Uh, that you can be a hero in disguise. And that sometimes the person who gets the credit for being the good guy isn't really the person that is doing the good deeds. Um, that you need to persevere and try harder. Um, I really like the message in Captain Planet in particular because it was about Earth and saving Earth. So that was one of the earlier uh, animation series where I thought, oh, th 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 these guys had a really good idea. They didn't just do something for entertaining, they're also passing a message about ecological awareness. So that was a pretty smart idea and it was still good versus evil and, you know, little people trying hard to fight against big corporations. And But, you know, with the power of uh, belief, uh, you can overcome the hardships and uh, get together and call for action and, you know, save the day. So, uh, so yeah, that was a lot of those messages of those early cartoons is about that. Not just free violence and uh, action stuff, but uh, usually a lot of good versus evil. Which is a bit strange, because the world isn't all black and white, what is good and what is evil. Sure, you get some notions of if you're doing, if you're doing a good deed or if you're doing a bad deed, but it's all also a lot very cultural. Um, and of course, if you're trying to destroy the Earth, it's very easy to assume that that's an evil thing. But what are the reasons behind wanting to destroy the Earth? Why did a person reach that point? And uh, those are things that you should be thinking about. But when you're young, you don't really think about. And these series don't really push you in that direction either. Anyways, <clears throat> moving on. After those Saturday Night cartoons, I suddenly realized, uh, mostly thanks to Japanese animations that you could do animated stuff uh, not for kids. You could do animated stuff for grown-ups. Uh, you can do it for uh, perverted senses, like uh, all the hentai that exists. You can do it for fantasy uh, things, to tell stories. Uh, you can talk about uh, technological things. And there was this particular movie that I watched, which really marked me, which was called Ghost in the Shell. 
And if you don't know Ghost in the Shell, you should go check it out. Um, they made a live action movie of uh, Ghost in the Shell recently as well. But the original was a, a movie. It was based on manga drawings. And it's all about the cyberpunk world. Um, so the, basically the world was destroyed or almost destroyed. There was a big war. And it changed a lot of things. There were a lot of refugees. But at the same time, technology developed a lot further. So warfare is very advanced. And the technological capacities are also very advanced. And the, the very interesting point that they had in Ghost in the Shell was that uh, your consciousness could be a machine or that your body could be artificially enhanced. Like uh, if you lost an arm, you can put an artificial arm. You can lose your whole body and replace all of your body parts and just remains your soul or your ghost, as they call it in the, in the thing. The ghost in the machine, that's, that's the point. It's like the soul behind it that makes the machine like a living entity. And um, what was interesting about Ghost in the Shell in particular was that the whole storyline wasn't about this technological world. It was about a detective story sort of thing uh, in the world. So the world was a backdrop but the whole point was the actual story itself and it had um, reflections of itself and how you can uh, uh, overcome the difficulties on, uh, on very subterfugic ways, not just tactical uh, and uh, army-like endeavors, but also uh, like a chess thing. You predict the next move when you try to do it uh, to to get the upper hand on the activity. So yeah, Ghost in the Shell was something that really taught me a lot about both artificial intelligence and uh, the culture we have uh, and the power of machines and evolution and uh, how you can enhance yourself. So that was really a smack in the face and I still am very much into, into the, those kinds of things. Uh, transhumanism, we usually call it that, uh, going beyond the usual human state. So yeah, a lot of lessons to be learned from Ghost in the Shell. Uh, what other stuff also marked me that uh, gave me some good hard earned lessons? Uh, Studio Gimli also does a lot of good animation movies. Um, Princess in the Sky, My Neighbor Totoro, Spirited Away. Uh, they have a lot of them. All of them are slightly different. Um, they do seem to share a bit of a core. Although some movies are apart from that, of Studio Ghibli's, but most of them are about this fantasy world where it's imagined and your character is like uh, usually young and it goes into this dream fantasy land where they need to help save the world. Of course, this changes a lot in the movies. I remember, for example, Princess Mononoke was not about that at all. It was about evil spreading and it was a very interesting movie because of that as well. And there was a lot of mysticism about gods and gods of the earth and how gods fight each other and the earth fights itself. And very interesting movie, Princess Mononoke, by the way. But the other movies from Studio Ghibli, I think we could do like one whole video just about each of these movies alone. So it's, it's a lot of things uh, to talk about. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to cover was that um, if you compare Disney movies with Studio Ghibli movies, uh, Disney movies always have like the story of the orphan, which is living in a very sad world, and supposedly it's supposed to teach the children that, okay, a lot of people have it harder than you, so you shouldn't, you know, just uh, uh, complain all the time. You should see from their examples and try to overcome your difficulties, whatever they are in life. And I believe that's the main lesson to be learned from most of... Uh, Disney movies, or at least the old Disney movies, all about the orphan kids, uh, Pinocchio, um, the movie that uh, that uh, that uh, Mikey mentioned as well, Dumbo, uh, is also about that orphan elephant. Um, all of them are a lot about that. Usually, orphan kids and trying to overcome the difficulties in life. Um, in Studio Ghibli, it's like a kid growing up. And there's this fantasy land that it needs to to that helps them move on. I'm I'm thinking sp particularly about that movie, uh, Spirited Away. But um, Castle in the Sky was also sort of similar. Um, yeah, so there were a lot of journey fantasy things involved in Studio Ghibli, which is not uh, strictly about the difficulties of being an orphan and living, although there are some cases of orphans in Studio Ghibli's uh, movies as well. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, 
other stuff that I wanted to mention about is the modern Disney um, animation movies, Disney slash Pixar. Um, the tone is slightly different. Uh, you have stuff like uh, Lion King, Jungle Book, Frozen, Finding Nemo, Moana. Uh, usually the, it has a backdrop story that if you want something, you when you work really hard for it, you can achieve it. And I think that's a positive message to give kids. Uh, things don't come out for free and you will have disappointments in life. But if you really like something, uh, you should go for it and uh, give it your best. And uh, hopefully uh, things will uh, go your way. The world will realize that you're making a hard, earnest attempt and help you reach your goals, whatever ridiculous they might uh, seem to, to some people in the beginning. So yeah, those are positive messages uh, that I, we can get from those movies. And I think it's important that those movies exist. Also a good thing about these latest animation movies from uh, Disney, Pixar, etc. Is that they're meant to entertain uh, both uh, little kids and grown-ups. So it's clearly uh, aimed at little kids um, because they want to also monetize the whole product with doing like, you know, animation figures, whatever, to sell afterwards this whole franchise around each movie uh, but they made it in a way that the parents can go to the movie as well and not get bored to death they they starting doing a lot of things like reusing old music in uh in the, in the stuff like licensing uh, old music that is relevant to the to the parents the parents know it and the kids don't necessarily know it but they get a feel from what the vibe of the music is and then you sort of build the bridge between both generations by just reusing music from the old days in a new scenario. So yeah, that's a very interesting uh, concept as well. And yeah, so this video was a bit, you know, everywhere, but I just wanted to talk about uh, lessons animation taught us in general and, you know, make a video about it and that's it. So uh, what you guys think? Um, was there any particular animation movie or series that you guys were watching that you learned a hard lesson from? Um, let me know what you think on your comments below. And uh, yeah, see you around next video. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.